So we're again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. So this is part two of rapid turn, fourth axis and probing. Cheers. While I'm working on the fourth axis, just remembered something I've been meaning to point out. You can see I've got the table, the fourth axis mounted on the extreme left end of the table by putting a small threaded um, stud or bolt there in the middle of this web. And there's a couple of good reasons for doing that that I'm not sure if I've explained. One is that it gives you more capacity on this side where you need maximum travel and space. But also for referencing. Just let me uh, show you that. Let's re-reference the X. And you can see there that the uh, stepper motor clears the column when it's in that position. And initially when I had it mounted on the T-slots and I, I referenced it in the X, I very nearly broke the stepper motor off up against the column. I just stopped it in time and thought, oh, that's not a good idea. I should really have the fourth axis mounted further to the left. Anyway, there's details on mounting that um, on some of my fourth axis uh, YouTube videos if you have a look at those. One thing I learned recently when doing production runs of parts in the fourth axis, um, I was previously having to wait while the fourth axis wound its way back to zero each time at the start of the code. And uh, now I've learned that you can put in a little bit of code, here we are, in here, that causes a reset of the uh, rotary position each time. So. Always good to have a folder if you don't have a great memory. Tormac 4th axis. And um, here we have a little note I put in here, put at the start of the code G10 L20 P1 A0. This code changes the final A position to A0. So that saves the time for the A axis to rewind its way all the way back round again and speeds up your production run. And when I took those earlier clips before I did the job, I didn't take the time to test and see just how accurate that A-axis probing, probing routine is or was. So I've just been doing that now. I've got a bit more time and it's pretty good. So uh, this is the, let's just do that now. Um, <coughs> Find AX, AXIS Center, Set Work Origin. So it does about six vertical probes to establish the diameter. Then it drops down to a Z height, rotates 90 degrees, probes the top, rotates another 90 degrees, probes the back at the same Z height. And winds itself back. So that establishes the uh, center of the A axis and the uh, Y and the Z. Um, and I did that on G54 work offset. So I'll test it on some other work offsets now with uh, various errors in the initial parking position to the front and the back to see how much, if anything, that affects the accuracy and the repeatability of it. So I repeated that probing routine three times with a different starting position each time. Um, and of course there's a whole lot of variables. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but it's pretty good. This is um, the probing routine in G54, and we're three microns negative. That's a tiny amount, tenth of a thou or something. So we'll go G55. We are nine microns positive, so that's less than half a thou. G56, again with three microns negative. So it's very close, considering all the variables with the dividing head, um, the backlash, the probe, um, and the concentricity of the part. You know, it's, it's obviously very accurate. For workshop purposes, that's really good. So I'll just do one more test now 
uh, that's sort of relative accuracy. I'll do one more now to uh, get a bit more of an absolute accuracy reading. I'm not sure how well this will work. I'm just going to set up some blocks, some ground blocks on either side so I can use a different probing routine. Hopefully that's set accurate. And we'll go to set that on G5 7 for another work offset. Go to probe, go to that one. Let's have a look at that. Okay, well let's have a look at the results. That last probing routine between the ground blocks was G57, so that set it up at Y0. We go to G56, and uh, we are 8 microns in the positive, no, in the negative. Uh, G55, 4 microns in the positive. G54, 8 microns in the negative. So that's really good. That's uh, better than a hundredth of a millimeter uh, repeatability with those two different test methods and considering that the probing routines the two different probing routines are coming from different directions um, the backlash in the average machine alone would account for more than that so it's very good for practical workshop purposes it's really accurate I couldn't find anything specifically on this a axis probing routine in the manual um, and I got some information from one of the new impact tolerant touch probe owners who'd spoken with Tormac Tech about it who said that ideally you should start with the tip tip width above the part and tip width off center in the Y negative direction um, and if you don't want the A axis to rotate as part of the probing routine and start it on A0, well, I repeated it as per that and I didn't find that that, that made any difference. If I set the A axis on 0, it still rotated and it didn't really matter exactly where I started the probing routine, I got the same accuracy. So, well, I've just had a couple of queries from a Hallmark ITTP owner regarding what appears to be a problem with the PathPilot software and the A axis probing routine. And while I just checked it out in the Y and it seems to be pretty good, I didn't actually check it out carefully in the Z. So let's just do that now. And I also know, I also know it seems impossible to switch off the a rotary axis part of the probing routine. Um, for example, at the moment I haven't got an A axis, and you can hear the uh, pulses going to the uh, to the driver, and they would be turning it if it was an A axis. So I'm just putting this down um, in case it helps with getting to the bottom of what this uh, Path Pilot probing routine issue is. Of course, this is just version. 1.9.11 and software is not my field and so I always hold back one or two versions and let the experts in the area lead the way and um, I gather there's been some problems with Pathpilot 2 now they've probably been resolved now um, and there's nothing to worry about um, and this problem itself may also have been resolved um, but I'm just putting it in the video here in case it hasn't been resolved to help some of the software developers um, identify exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is rerun the probing routine to check the Z. So here we are on the probing page. So we're going to rerun this probing routine again now. So it's working out what the diameter is. It should have that in its uh, software now. So you can hear that coordinated motion and the uh, the A axis 
is sending this uh, software is sending the signal to turn the a-axis even though there's no a-axis installed so that's slowing the procedure down and it's uh, unnecessary in this situation okay so now we have done that and we set the z which is the center line of the part so it will have accounted for the diameter of the part now I'll uh, change the work offset to G55 and just do a straight Z probe. Okay, now we're on G55. Let's go to probe page. Let's go to XYZ probe page. So here we are. We're just going to do set Z, probe Z set work origin, and um, we'll have that as a double check in the Z. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's now set it two different ways and we can compare. So just to get it roughly right, I'll just come down now until it's touching. And there it's tripped and there it's touching. We're not worried about uh, microns or tenths of a thou here. We're just trying to get it roughly right for a double check. Okay, so that should be half the diameter of the part higher. So if I now enter G54 again, you can see Z there is on zero approximately. G54, the first work offset. I'm trying to film and do this at the same time. I'm probably hitting the wrong button. Okay, now we have uh, we're on Z55, Z, Z, uh, G55, Z0 and G54, 11.46. Now, if we sub that should be the radius of the part. And if you have a look at the part, it's a piece of 3 quarter inch. And it's uh, a radius of 9.525, half of 3 quarter inch. And we're getting 11.46. So there's a difference there of about one. 0.9 something of a millimeter so that's quite a serious glitch in the software I can't see any other explanation for it it may be um, it has been brought to the attention of Tormac um, but whether it's got through to the uh, software developer and and whether it's actually been resolved for the latest version or not I'm not sure so I'm just identifying here that there is a problem between the A axis Z probe and the conventional Z probe there's a discrepancy looks like the error is in the A-axis Z probe at least on version 1.9.11 about that uh, tur unnecessary turning of the fourth axis um, I've heard that if you set the A on zero it will disconnect that feature um, so I did set it on zero and it still attempted to rotate the fourth axis. So it's really important that these problems are accurately and clearly defined um, for troubleshooting purposes. It's very difficult to get to the bottom of a problem if we're a bit vague about any of the details. We just get into a, a whole lot of emails going backwards and forwards that don't really resolve anything. So I'm being pretty pedantic here for that reason. If this particular problem with the Z on the A probing routine is still not resolved, although it may well be resolved in the current version of Pathpilot, but if it's still not resolved, it's not that big a deal. You just need to remember that there is an issue there and you need to rerun over the top of it um, an additional uh, standard Z probing routine to uh, set your Z. So as long as you're aware of it, there's no big problem. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for following me on this journey. Um, just a bit of an update on the impact tolerant touch probe for any of you who might be interested. It's been going really well now. Um, this time last year, 12 months ago, I finally came up with a winning formula of contact materials and electrical fluid and other settings um, and the design of the retract mechanism. And it all came together with what turned out to be the winning formula. Well, it has been so far anyway. Um, so I started testing it in December last year and in February started shipping them out to early adopters. And now there's scores of them around the world. Um, so that's just a bit of an update. I need to do a specific update video on it sooner or later, but um, there's a stopgap in the meantime. Cheers. 
So all is going really well with the Hallmark ITTP probe. Um, that's the prototype Mark III that I put together in December 2016. So this one was tested then and it's been going for over a year now. We've reached an annual anniversary and still not struck any significant problems. Um, I know some of you are frustrated trying to get hold of me, wanting to buy one of these probes. I haven't listed it on a full commercial website yet. So far it's been a sort of an engineer's enthusiast's project. Um, and until I catch up with demand, I don't want to start up a website because then, then I imagine demand will really take off and I just won't be able to catch up. And I need to be able to also keep up with my uh, engineering repeat contract work here in New Zealand. Um, which is very valued and I don't want to lose that work. So if you're interested in one of these, send me an email, cliffhalldesign at gmail.com and um, we can take it from there. Thanks, cheers. Mm -hmm.